No, no, no. Well, you enjoy it. You're gonna, you, you won't be disappointed. No, you won't. You're gonna enjoy it. Yeah, all, all the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's been mulling around, I think, for many years, but when my mum died and I inherited the photo collection, I suddenly realised there's a story here. All the anecdotes and things that she told me over the years. Knowing my father briefly, we didn't know him very well, but he was a figurehead, and we spent some very happy times with him up in Wales. But I think the challenge was to, to make, to put it in chronological order, and that's where I took a friend of mine called Tony Emery, who's a bit of an archivist, we spent hours at the Warwick University archives looking at the Standard Motor Company papers and hours at the Heritage Motor Museum looking at photographs and uh, we sort of put the story together and eventually I was able to get it in order, sort of 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, like that. But it was just, it was such a, such a fascinating character to be around. I mean, they use the word charismatic today. Um, it's difficult to describe, but he made a big impact in, in a lot of people's lives. Obviously, as his family, it was a very personal thing, and it was sad when he died, obviously, in 1965. But I just felt it was a story that had to be told. It was a good part of history for the motor industry, and Standard and, obviously, Triumph being rescued from oblivion in 1945 when he bought it for £75,000 really sort of made... It really put that sort of image on, on, the, on the, the market, the global market, in the motoring world. And uh, so it was just, I think the photos really are the story, but then it's the background information that I found out afterwards that sort of filled the whole thing out. Mm. I, know, I know very little about the motor industry myself. I've learned a little bit on the way, and I know very little about the cars and the engines and things, but I've kind of cultivated a bit of an interest in that. And um, it's been a fantastic journey. It's been really interesting. And I've, I've sort of come to know this figure that was, a, like I said, a sort of figurehead before. I didn't know him terribly closely, but I enjoyed his company. But I, I got to know an awful lot about his life. What was really fascinating was that he'd already had an amazing sort of uh, historic engagement with things, sports in skiing and sailing and things, long before he even married my mother in 1943. So the 30s were particularly a very important era, I feel and some of the best cars, the flying standards, were created in that time and, uh, and others. So it was just something that I had to do for myself, but something that I feel a lot of other people perhaps have benefited from reading about it, the story as well. Now there, was a, there were a whole host of uh, cine films that the family had, but they all went missing, but there was one you managed to find. And, uh, That's true. Yes, and 1949, Mallory Court, where mm. I was born, and there's me as a baby in arms, being cradled by this rather charming looking Belgian lady called Didi Wagner, whose uh, husband Louis Wagner made standard vanguards after the war in Belgium. And there's my dad sort of, uh, sort of uh, you know, walking around, um, uh, walking around the, the garden at Mallory Court, and, uh, and my mum you know, wearing a fur stole. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a really good, it's a really good little period piece. And uh, we enjoyed having it put onto DVD, obviously, from the 16 millimeter of color film. That's the only record we've got of your father at the moment. The only moving record of him, actually, in color as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, we believe there are some other films about, but they haven't come to light yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.